Hey everyone, higher running coach and Hoka athlete Sage Candy here with another training talk Tuesday or training talk Thursday. I believe this is episode number 36. We're going to dive right into your top voted question. Thank you so much to all of you that have submitted. Following along on this training talk series, uh, we talk about distance running training. Let's get started. Uh, first question, top voted one Why is my easy pace so slow? I'm on your 5K, 10K plan. That's our higher running training plan that Sandy, Coach Sandy and I developed. And I ran a 33.18 for the local five mile turkey trot, about 6.40 per mile. Five miles is almost exactly eight kilometers, by the way, for my metric friends, 4.96 miles is eight kilometers. Uh, you know, it's about 10 second difference, 12 second difference, give or take. Uh, only three weeks in. So we ran that time only three weeks in, pretty good progress. Uh, but my genuine easy pace, 130 to 150 beats per minute heart rate is nine minute per mile to 1030 uh, per mile. For comparison, McMillan running calculator says my easy pace is 732 to 833 per mile pace. Is this holding me back in some way or don't worry about it? Does it mean that I'm aerobically undertrained? Background info, 30 year old male, uh, I believe HS means high school runner, 20 miles per week. Uh, so we ran in high school, 20 miles per week, 32K per week. Started back up two years ago, recent PRs, 219 for 800 meters, 519 for the mile, or about 1600 meters. Uh, 1949 for five kilometers. Also ran 338 for a marathon in October. Legs locked up at mile 20. Uh, that I'd been consistently at 40 to 50 miles per week since... June, so I think my base is decent for me. So a lot of uh, intertwined questions there and a lot of things that parallel back to a lot of training talks I've done on building your aerobic base, take your easy days easy, uh, how to extend stamina endurance, how to run longer without getting tired, right? How to not breathe as hard at like marathon pace or how to improve that marathon pace so you're running maybe up to your potential in a long distance race like a half marathon or marathon or 5K or 10K, depending on what you want to focus on. But the first thing I'd see uh, dissecting the first part of that question there, congratulations, by the way, though, on all those times and that improvement, uh, you know, only three weeks into the program, you're running 33, 18, 640 per mile pace for five miles, eight kilometers. Uh, you know, I ran some calculations and we'll look in, in, at Jack Daniels, this is running calculator formula online as well. But the first thing I throw out the window is the heart rate number, right? I've done a lot of talks on heart rate. You know, I wear a chest strap a lot. I like to monitor heart rate data. I think it's great when you know your max heart rate though. Uh, and usually to get 100% max heart rate, you need a VO2 max test, or you need to really push really hard in a very evenly paced 3K or 5K, or do some really, really hard hill reps. And even then it's hard to get 100% reading. There's a lot of genetic variation. So don't go by formulas. Don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, if you don't have a real 100% heart rate max value, you can't extrapolate down to what is 75% or what does this heart rate range mean for me? You know, 130 beats per minute, 150 beats per minute, that doesn't mean anything if your max is like over 200 beats per minute, even as someone who's over 30 years old. It usually, sometimes it changes in weird ways as we age. So it's a very genetic individual thing with heart rate. Um, and that, you know, I do the talk test. If you could talk and carry on a conversation you're probably not running too hard on your easy days. And the easy days range, I do agree with these calculators, like a minute per mile, you know, 60 seconds plus or minus, it could be on the day, like a true recovery jog, you might start off a lot slower, maybe start off really shuffling at 10 minute mile pace or shuffle for, for this runner, um, you know, and six minutes per kilometer, but then eventually you speed up to nine minute per mile pace. Uh, but on other days you feel really good, you might be pushing eight minute per mile pace. So there's a huge range there. And some days are true recovery, some days are building up-tempo stamina aerobic endurance, but it's under the lactate threshold. So it's under 80%, you're still able to carry on a conversation, but you might be straining yourself more with the impact force of running, the skeletal muscular system. Uh, but generally, you know, if we look at these times, in putting, putting them in the calculator, I'll run the clip here of examining this in the Jack Daniels distance running formula calculator. And I'm gonna use that 5K time uh, because it, it corresponds better to the marathon time. We could kind of see uh, if he's maybe more 
of a, a speed demon, so to speak, or it may just be that he focused on track running the mile, 1600 meters in track earlier in life, had more speed, or just genetically has more natural speed. Some people are more naturally inclined to run 800 meters or 5Ks or under. Some people are more naturally inclined to be better at the marathon, right? And they may not have that speed. Uh, but some of it could be changed with training and lifestyle factors. And that's going to be the key part of this talk in the second half here is talking about building that aerobic base. Uh, is he aerobically undertrained? Yes, probably. Um, 40 to 50 miles a week is very good. It's probably not going to allow most people to reach their full potential in a long distance race like the marathon. We see a lot of progress and improvement when people get up to 60 miles a week or 100 kilometers per week. That's pretty serious training. It takes a big commitment. Some people can't do that because they get injured, but if you can do that and you can pull that off, usually you have a lot more stamina and strength. You could lower that marathon time relative to your 5K time, but it's a moving target. It's a moving target. So let's run the clip, enter it in. We'll go on to Jack Daniels Distance Running Formula website uh, and talk about it there. All right, so this is Jack Daniels Distance Running Calculator Formula Equivalency Table. We're entering that 5K time. Uh, so the 5K time, 19 minutes and 49 seconds, calculates out the pace, 622 per mile pace. Uh, put that in kilometers, it's 358 per kilometer pace. Now, you know, we have a recent race performances. We could see what's roughly equivalent, uh, 10K being 637 per mile pace, actually pretty close to that 8K pace. Uh, we could say, you know, 8 kilometer race pace. 10 kilometer race pace is pretty similar. Uh, 637 is actually a little faster. And that marathon, low three hours, uh, 309.48 in the marathon as a rough equivalence. Now, that's if you were focusing 100% on the marathon training and totally dialed to your full marathon potential. Whether or not he could run a low three hour marathon or even a sub three hour marathon uh, in the future is yet to be determined, but that's kind of the, the speed that uh, he has shown already, uh, 7.14 per mile pace, 4.30 per kilometer pace. Now, you know, we look back to the question some other times in there, the mile time or 1,600 meter time, uh, much faster than the 5.48 projected there, uh, or 546, 1,600 meter time there. So he's got a lot of speed. He's got a lot of speed. He could run a low five-minute mile as an all-out mile time trial. Uh, that's, you know, quite a bit faster. So coming from the speedier side, maybe that's, uh, you know, something that he focused on more in high school, probably more likely, uh, dialed that performance reach more of a potential in them in a shorter distance race, like the mile. Um, but it shows a lot of speed potential, but maybe, you know, genetically he's has more speed naturally. Uh, but to extend that marathon endurance, we'll look at the training paces. Now the training paces, we see easy, run pace 812 per mile to 902 per mile pace uh so 506 per kilometer to 537 per kilometer it's a slower range than mcmillan tables and uh something that i'd more agree with that range you could definitely go 930 per mile pace or a little slower on true recovery days but you know he could also be pushing 730 per mile uh if he's training to eventually run a, a low three-hour marathon if that's in the card so building that aerobic base uh, you know, nine minute to 1030 per mile. It's a little bit on the slower side. Uh, again, I don't believe in junk miles though. So you do what you have to do to recover and build your mileage up without getting injured, reduce the impact force. It's not about pushing every day. Uh, but you know, projected marathon pace 714, eventually that could be a reality to run a, a marathon at low seven minute miles pace, qualify for Boston or uh, even crack three hours in the marathon, 430 per kilometer pace as a race pace. Uh, and the goal with aerobic base building is to get those paces dialed so that you could run that pace f at a lower heart rate average. When the heart rate comes down and you're running these paces, you're more efficient. You've developed really well aerobically. Now, it takes a lot of mileage. For a lot of people, it takes over 50 miles a week, 80 kilometers a week. Like I always say, 100 kilometers a week, 60 miles a week is a really good improvement area for a lot of people, but you can't get hurt. You can't get hurt and, uh, you know, Eventually, people could really improve in the long distance races, especially, uh, with, you know, over 10K half marathon marathon, but it all comes down to that 5K speed as well. So, you know, 1950 per 5K, uh, you know, really good time. Um, the marathon hasn't caught up to that yet, that performance yet, or his mile time yet. So that's kind of what we see with the calculator. 
and it leads me to believe that, you know, there is a lack of, of aerobic base, so to speak, but, you know, some of it also could just be genetic lifestyle factors. Um, building that mileage up is going to be key as well as a lot of threshold sessions. So we look at the threshold intensity. All right. So now that we've seen that analysis, uh, you know, like I said, probably aerobically underdeveloped, undertrained is very common. It's very common for people that have, have started up at lower mileage numbers. When I say lower mileage, I'm talking about 20, 30 miles per week, 32 kilometers, 50 kilometers per week. Uh, it takes time to build that aerobic base. Years and years and years of higher mileage, consistency over months and months. It's not just a, a weekly thing or a daily thing. It's consistency over time. And you know how you focus your training workouts matter as well. So you know if the easy days are too easy, I don't believe in the junk mileage so much. Um, I think you want to run with good form. You don't want to be sloppy, but you could definitely run. Most people should run their easy days easier. Um, I wouldn't be a slave to the numbers though with that heart rate range. Like I said, the heart rate range could really vary. Use the talk test. Use how you feel. The main reason why we always preach easy days easy and slowly build the aerobic base or MOF method, you know, whatever you want to call <laughs> limiting the intensity is because of impact force and the risk of injury. If you're trying to build up your mileage to 50 miles per week, 80 kilometers per week, and you're not used to running that, you don't want to get injured doing that. You want to do it. You want to build up to that with slow miles first before you add intensity and speed. And so when you're pushing the mileage envelope, that's already one stress. You got to keep the pace uh, not too, you don't want your form breaking down. You don't want to be pushing, pushing every day. Mentally, it's hard too. It's, it's stressful. You might not get enough sleep. You might be stressed out with family life and work stress, something like that. Uh, your nutrition might be dialed, not dialed, or you might be dehydrated. So those are all factors too. Um, but yes, to build up that aerobic base does take time for him. Uh, you know, it's probably going to take over 40 or 50 miles a week, very consistent workouts, not taking the easy days, super easy. I, you know, I would say based off that calculator, you're looking at something kind of in between those ranges, not as aggressive as McMillan, uh, or necessarily Daniels, but something in the eight to nine minute per mile range. I know a lot of three, low three hour marathon runners, you know, running under 310. Their easy days could fluctuate any given day at closer to nine minute mile per pace, nine minutes per mile pace, or sub eight minutes per mile pace. Now, if you want to crack three hours in the marathon, that's 652 per mile pace, you might be pushing some easy days close to 730 even. But there's a range. There's a range there. Like I said, you know, a minute per kilometer range, 90 seconds per mile type of range uh, almost. It's really the quality days. The threshold sessions, lactate threshold, aerobic threshold, um, and then some of the speed intervals that really are the icing on the cake, but that aerobic base, the volume needs to be there. The quality long runs need to be there because uh, it gives you that stamina and that aerobic endurance. You get it at the cellular, cellular, well, I really can't talk today, cellular level, the mitochondria, aerobic enzymes, but also uh, you know blood flow, capillary bed density, and fat burning efficiency as well as you know, just mentally getting into it, you build up a lot of leg muscle strength and better running efficiency or running form, running economy at those types of paces. Uh, so all of a sudden, maybe eventually your marathon race pace is close to seven, low seven minutes per mile, and your heart rate is under control at that level. And that's really the key of the fitness is you see the heart rate drop over long periods of time, even at all pace ranges, your easy aerobic pace. Uh, but again, I wouldn't be a slave to the numbers. Uh, take your easy days easy, build up that aerobic base. Check out my other videos on aerobic base building, heart rate training, stuff like that. I've got a whole library. I've been doing these training talks for over 12 years here on the YouTube. Thanks so much to all the Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible, as well as all you just watching, tuning in. Thumbs up if you like these videos. Subscribe on here. Submit your question for next week's training talk Tuesday topic. Uh, we have a coaching website, higherrunning.com. We have uh, Coach Rachel as well as Coach Laura have some openings for individualized co custom coaching. Uh, they are our higher running coaches. Check it out. Uh, link in the description below as well as our plans like the 5K, 10K plan as well as ultra marathon plans, marathon plans, half marathon, you name it, any surface, any distance. Check it out. Thanks for your support. Uh, shout out to title sponsor Hoka. Keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, also you could still sign up for the Higher Running Virtual 5K Charity Run this Saturday. You get a bid download. You don't necessarily have to run even. You, don't, you could tune in. I'm going to be running a 5K, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, Colorado Time. 
Uh, it's to raise money for the Boulder fire victims, a lot of our neighbors who didn't have renter's insurance and stuff like that. So you can check it out also on our website. Thank you so much for all your support. Again, really, really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.